Today we are going to discuss about the major branches of philosophy. Number one, we have metaphysics. Number two, we have logic. Three, axiology or ethics. And number four is the epistemology. we are going to focus in axiology and epistemology. Let us start now with axiology or what we call ethics. The word axiology is derived from two Greek roots, axios means worth or value, and logos means logic or theory. Now let us define what is axiology. Axiology is the branch of philosophy dealing with quality or value that studies judgments about values, including both ethics and aesthetics. Now what is value? Value are the preferences made on the basis of what we consider good in various fields of life. It is the property of material object and phenomenon of social consciousness which characterize its importance to society, to a class, or a man. The nature of value are, or may be, subjective or objective. It may also be changing or constant. We have different kinds of values. We have the health, bodily, recreational, economic values, social values, moral values, aesthetic values, intellectual values, and religious values. We also have two branches of axiology. First is the ethics. Second would be the aesthetics. Now, in this video, we are going to focus on ethics. Ethics studies values in the realm of human conduct. It deals with such question as, what is good for all men? How one should behave? What is right? What is morally wrong? Axiology in modern man can guide human life individual as well as social, secular as well as non-secular, in the right direction. Man searches for truth, praises beautiful, and attempts good. Axiology serve as a guide for this purpose. Now let's have axiology in science. Science can provide us with means only. It can never give about ends. It is the philosophy of values which helps us in deciding as to how and for what purpose these means should be utilized. Next is Axiology and Education. Values are everywhere in education. By using values, teacher evaluates students. The student evaluate the teachers. Society and educators evaluate each other. Actology affects why you are learning, which is the motivations or desired outcomes. What you are learning, which is the dominant culture practices, and even how you learn, which is the factual recall versus learn by doing. We have here an example. If you were asked in your education to learn about the U.S. presidents and you operate from an axiology of individualism, you may choose to see individual president as exceptional leaders. You may seek to discover the habits that made them successful and to enumerate these strategies to attain success for yourself. Now, 
and who chooses these topics for us to learn about anyways? Teachers, responding to directives from principals, superintendents, school boards, and state education officials who hold compliance and accountability to state law as essential axiologies. Another question is, how will you learn? Sitting docile in a desk, eyes alert and lips zipped, surrounded by a warm axiology of being good and following rules? The beautiful thing is, I can't say and I cannot decide because you have the power to identify the axiologies that drive and shape your education. Now let us proceed to the next branch of philosophy, which is the epistemology. Epistem means knowledge or understanding. Logos means study or science. Epistemology is the study of the nature and scope of knowledge and justified belief. It is the theory of knowledge. Now here we have the epistemological questions. What does knowledge mean? How does a person get to know something? What is the basis of true knowledge? So what is knowledge? Knowledge is justified true belief. It means that the person must be able to justify the claim. The claim itself must be true and the person must believe in it. Epistemology in a non-philosophical context. This is because the task of producing new knowledge is a major part of everyday work of academics. Thus, scholars in academic departments and disciplines such as curriculum and instruction, educational science, and pedagogy have more or less an inherent interest in issues related knowledge. So the concept of epistemology is also used outside philosophy. So we have first formal epistemology. It is the study of questions such as what is knowledge? How may a belief be justified? How do we know that something is true? For example, in mathematical logic, science, statistics, linguistics, computing, and other academic fields. Second is the genetic epistemology. It is used to study the cognitive development among children and how children understand, learn, and acquire new knowledge. For example, we have the sensory motor scheme, that's the impression and experiences. After the symbolic systems, which are the thoughts and knowledge. The third one is the social epistemology. It is about the social context for creating new knowledge. So for example, in sociology, psychology, and education. Therefore, I believe that epistemology has a very important role in education. So here are the three reasons why. Number one, it deepens students' understanding and ties various disciplines together. Epistemology can tie together many different disciplines and help students understand the field a lot better. Second reason is, it encourages students to question their own belief and knowledge systems. So teaching epistemology raises awareness for our own personal biases and ideals which can sometimes disrupt our learning. Teaching epistemology allows students to be aware of themselves. Why 
or what they think, how they think, and how, why they think that way. The third reason is it's fun. Studying epistemology is fun. There really is no other subject like quiet epistemology and most students will find it enjoyable to deviate from traditional academic subjects and learn about such a unique and interesting topic as the study of knowledge itself. Thank you.